I own a Honda CBX. You guys haven't seen my CBX other than one video I've made on it. And I have some updates even though it's been a while. I bought this bike about six or seven months ago now, back in December of 2023, and the bike wasn't running at the time. The bike still isn't running, but we kind of got the bike started. Let's open the garage and let's look at the CBX after a very, very long time. I haven't made this video because, well, I wanted to get further in the CBX's restoration, but it's going to take a little bit more time than I thought, and I said, well, you guys deserve an update on the CBX. So it's been sitting in this corner of shame for a couple of months now. The bike is on trickle charge, and in the last video, I think I couldn't get the bike to turn over anymore because this battery is in a very awkward location. But in order to talk about the CBX, we have to jump back a couple of months from the very first day that I started working on the bike because it was a little bit more painful to access the battery than you might think. So let's flash back to a few months ago. All right, so here's the CBX. Today we're gonna to be taking the tank off because on well, the inside of the tank has a good amount of rust and corrosion on it. I need to take care of that ASAP because getting a new CBX tank is probably gonna be a pain. We gotta get out of here. We gotta take off the seat, that rear cowling, I believe, and then we should be able to access the tank and the battery while I'm there. The very first thing we had to do with the CBX was take the entire rear cowling off. The reason I had to do this was to access the battery because we needed the battery to be semi-charged or at least get the terminals so we can jump the bike to see that if it was still turning over. Because when I bought the bike, the CBX was turning over. The clock was working as it's working right now and the bike was working with the starter but obviously it wasn't starting because there's no fuel in it. I needed to take everything apart to get to the battery and the gas tank because the gas tank was beginning to rust on the inside. The state of the gas tank was uh, not very good. So I had to take apart a bunch of bolts, a bunch of things, and after everything, I finally got access to the tank. Because this is a later model CBX with the fairing in the front, you actually have to take the rear part of the fairing off. There's a couple of weird bolts and you kind of have to feel it out and after getting the tank out, I fished out a ton of nails. So obviously right now the tank is off of the bike and the tank is actually sitting right here. I semi have this tank clean and we'll take a look at it on the inside in just a second. But there was a ton of nails inside of this tank and I spent a long time getting those out. So after getting the tank taken off the bike, putting the battery on charge, I began fishing all of the nails out of the tank. Now this was a good sign for one reason. The tank was rusted, yes, but it's proof that the previous owner knew that the tank was rusted and hopefully they didn't try to use the tank with fuel in it to feed the carburetors because otherwise the carbs are going to be insanely dirty. Normally I would make this one video taking the carbs out, showing you guys the inside of them, showing the tank, but you have to tip the motor forward and actually remove the motor from some of the motor mounts to get the carburetors out. And that's gonna be a whole video on its own. But I got to the point where I got the tank off, fished the nails out, and then I put Evaporust through the tank. And I let Evaporust sit, and sit, and sit, rotating the tank every few hours, and I let it sit for a few days, and it didn't do anything. Evaporust kind of just cleaned out a little bit. It did a good flush of the tank, but it really wasn't the results I was hoping for. And that brings us to today where evaporust, you're supposed to let the evaporust sit, turn it, and then fill it with gasoline to avoid flash rust. And I did all that and it's currently sitting with gas in it, but I need to clean the tank more thoroughly. Whereas there's another process where you hook up electricity, salt water, and that's the next step that we're gonna have to take with the tank. But the tank did get cleaned out. I did get to flush it at least once, knowing that while well, I tried to do something and kind of stopped the rust, but we need to do a lot more. But we got to the fun part. Once the tank was off, once I got to clean the tank out a little bit, we got to test to see if the CBX actually ran. And this was super exciting because well, it was a kind of moment of truth uh, whether or not this bike was a dud or not. Obviously the bike turned over, but I had real no idea if it actually was going to just fire up after cleaning the carbs. It being a Honda, I had a pretty good suspicion that was going to be the case, and I wasn't too worried. But we charged the battery, put some starter fluid in, and I'll let you guys watch the video of the CBX firing for the first time in my ownership, and firing for the first time in at least five years.
Now that felt awesome to hear this bike run for the very, very first time. It's tucked into this corner for a couple of reasons. I have some other bikes taken apart and I also do need to clean this garage out before I want to actually dissect this bike and get to it. The next step of this restoration is realistically nothing too major. The only two things that we need to do other than the gas tank are clean the carburetors out and flush the brakes out, clean the brakes out because they've been sitting, disc brakes don't like to sit, and once we get the brakes and the bike running again, it's all ready to go. There's nothing else we really have to do unless we encounter some other weird thing when the bike gets running again. But I want to emphasize really quickly, this bike has one, two, three, four, five, six carburetors and six cylinders. And if you can see here, these carburetors aren't going to easily slide out because the motor is tipped ever so slightly. So this motor is actually part of the frame. And if you can see here, it kind of hangs from here. There's no frame in the front like your regular motorcycle, which means that removing the engine or tipping the engine forward to get the carburetors out isn't really the end of the world, but it definitely takes some time. But it also just means that because of that lean angle and it being so tightly compacted that these carburetors are going to take a while and there's more steps involved than just taking them out. So we're gonna have to go put this bike on the table and quite literally almost remove the engine entirely, and remove all the throttle cables, get the carburetors out, send them out to go get professionally rebuilt, whether it's from the guy working on one of my other bikes or whether it's from one of the CBX experts. Then they'll bench tune it from there and to get it exact, if it's not running quite right, I will put the carburetors back onto the bike and go take the bike over to the shop where he said he would sync the carburetors up for me. Um, I just don't know where I want to send the carburetors, but I got to get the carburetors off before I can send them out anyways. This bike is actually going to be up next on the list before too long, but there are a few bikes, one in particular, that I want to get fixed before I can put the CBX up on the table. And there's a little bit of an update on the CBX. Not that anyone's been asking, but I'm sure people are excited to see this bike back on the road because, I mean, it's probably one of the coolest bikes that Honda has ever made. Air-cooled six-cylinder, 24-valve, dual overhead cam. I mean, it was an engineering marvel at the time. With all of that being said, I need to clean out the rest of the shop, get some of the bikes in order, and actually work on the bikes that I have on the back burner. Anyways, that's all I have for this video. If you guys enjoyed, as always, do me a favor, leave me a like, subscribe to the channel because it helps greatly. And so you stay in tune and updated with all of the videos and things like that. As always, I'll see you guys in the next one and watch another video.